If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. And if you're looking for code cards, make sure you check out Poton Store. They have automatic email delivery and all the latest Pokemon TCG codes and you can use Tablemon code for 5% off. If you're from Europe, MealyBotsGaming.com is a great option to get your cards from. They have all sorts of sealed products, merchandise, and all the sets available from Pokemon Sun and Moon upwards, including the latest Hidden Fate set. Don't forget to use Tailmon code when checking out to get a further 5% off from your final purchase. Welcome back to a brand new day of Road to Theater Worlds 2020. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're live with me on Twitch, thanks for hanging out. And if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And so I managed to get top eight at San Diego Regionals. I've had a pretty couple, a pretty nice couple of um, Pokemon related weekends where I won two League Cups back to back after not having won a single League Cup for like six months and then I managed to make top eight in San Diego and yeah pretty happy about the result um, the list that you have right in front of you is the list I ended up using at the tournament I am sure you will recognize it because it's literally only one card different than Sander Perro's um, top eight list from Daytona Beach. So huge props to him on the list. The only card that I changed was I took out the Fairy Mimikyu and I put in a third Milo Lana, assuming there would be a bunch of mirror matches. And there were a bunch of mirror matches and the third Milo Lana definitely came in clutch in a lot of situations. However, however, um, not having that Fairy type Mimikyu might have been my demise when I lost to the eventual champion in Swiss rounds Justin Bokari and lost to him again in top 8. Had the bracket been a little bit different I might have had a better chance at going deeper into the tournament having a deeper run but alas that was not the case. Still pretty happy though top 8 is a really awesome time and Team Omnipog imagine not playing squids and doing well. I mean squids did pretty well right? Squids did pretty well, to be fair. <laughs> but thank you so much, Joe, for stopping by. Um, definitely, definitely happy that um, I played this deck. Definitely very, uh, very comfortable with it. As I played it more throughout the week, I ended up, um, I ended up being more comfortable with it and realizing how powerful it is. And this whole like slow and steady once the race kind of thing ended up being really really cool um i already went over the deck in case you want to watch the deck explanation it's over in the other deck um showcase last week where i featured ad Pero, as i like to call it so i think it's wise if we just jump right into the games we're trying to power up with ultimate ray we're trying to block gx's with keldeo and we have mewtwo and um mewtwo and not Mewtwo, sorry, Girafferig and Cryogonal for tech purposes. And Tommy Boy, thank you so much for the congrats. That's very kind of you as well. Thank you to everyone who is here watching. And hopefully we can showcase the deck to its full potential. Like I said, you have to be very patient with this deck. It's not a very aggressive deck. Your damage output is very limited. So you're trying to create some um, specific specific win conditions. Now, I believe we're up against Squids, Omnipoke's favorite favorite deck ever, <laughs> which he used at World, so clearly it is his favorite deck ever. And we have a decent -ish start. We are going first, so that's always good. We have the tackle. We should be able to get the turn to um, Chaotic Order. All right. So let's tackle Chaotic Order. No, Alter Creation. Why did I say Chaotic Order? <laughs> um, all right. So I'm thinking these two. My Goose Mahala is indeed prized. I still would have picked this into Caitlyn though. There is merit to grabbing the two 
um, ADPs and then Pokecoming if I had the, the 10 HX available, but that is also priced. So I have a custom catcher piece as well priced. So a little bit harsh on the prices, though not the end of the world. We have an escape board price, we have a metal price, so that's five of our six prices figured out. And I'm not sure what else is priced, but uh Amalolana actually. No, no, it's not Amalolana. Doesn't matter though, we have the double energies, we should be able to draw um three cards here get ourselves into a decent position we can't recover any supporter but now we even find the switch so that we don't have to use the malolana we can save that i will however play the chaotic swell because that's especially useful uh does the damage counter matter not in the grand scheme of things i don't think it's not enough for garchantina to chaos and it's like if garchantina ends up discarding us then that so not like that that happens and so be it. Um, the chaotic soil is pretty important because that denies a possible Viridian Forest and can hopefully slow down our opponents, which would be very good. Definitely, definitely be very good. So we see a mysterious treasure, see an Inke, so off to a decent start. <clears throat> Applying damage with side power could actually be important for my opponent. Does find the Cynthia. Losing a spell tag is also good for us. Really, really good, I'd say. And we see an Acrobike. Is this Garchomp Tina or Ultra? Um, we don't know, actually, Daniel Davis. We do not know yet. We did see the um, the dragon typing in the previous screen, but we in fact do not know. Oh no, 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes to showcase the deck. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and attach, I'm gonna go ahead and switch, and I don't see why I wouldn't just alter creation jigs. I feel like I'm gonna bench this guy just in case, but we're gonna alter creation. Now we get an extra prize, and the game will effectively be over in three turns unless my opponent gets out his big tag team at some point. Um, now I think about it, perhaps benching this was a little over eager. And we have less than 10 minutes to showcase this deck and hopefully get the win against Mali. This maintenance will be happening, so I feel like I'm probably gonna switch to PTTGO afterwards. It is Garchamptina, and we see the Trevenant and Dusnor. So pretty interesting to see that. If my opponent pulls off the Pale Moon GX, we might be in a little trouble. Because then we'd be trading three energies for zero damage. However, see a Latios. My opponent needs a switch for that to happen. So he'll bench the Jirachi retreat. And if he finds a switch, he will be able to use Pale Moon GX. So that means we will be forced to pretty much Mallow and Lana um, into the Kale Deal, which wouldn't be terrible, honestly. Because I don't want to give up three prizes that easily. Uh, my opponent only finds a mysterious treasure though, so here's what's going to happen. I imagine we are going to end up carrying this Jirachi and then my opponent will utilize Pale Moon GX, discard all my energy and force me to switch to remove the effect. But then that's okay because I will have removed the effect. And I believe powering up the other ADP would be wise. Oh, does my opponent have the switch here? Come on. What? Oh my gosh, what the heck? That is insane that he pulled that off on turn two. So he didn't need the switch, he needed the treasure to discard Psychic, and he got all the Psychics he needed. That is absolutely insane. That is actually insane that my opponent pulled this off. Um, all right. I'm just gonna switch. I'm not gonna remove the damage. That is absolutely insane that my opponent managed to pull that off. And thank you so much, Daniel Davis. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Kags, uh, no worries. All good. Thank you so much for 
for being here. Next time, definitely come and say hi, yeah? Uh, that's so awkward that he actually managed. He got the perfect Cynthia. He actually pulled off the perfect Cynthia. All right, so he's just gonna attack me and keep shuffling my hand. So it comes down to top deck mode, I guess. Yeah. The good thing is he's bench locked, so he can't pressure me with um, guard jump. No guard jump Giratina, sorry, with the regular Giratina. We're both in top deck mode. <laughs> Kill the walls of his dude. Decides to retreat and start applying pressure with the Mew. Which is not the end of the world. I will eventually top deck out of this, right? I will eventually top deck out of this. And there we go. So Lily, very nice. Uh, well, not so nice, actually. I didn't get two energies. I only got one. I'll pass. Uh, this is a slight problem, because once I knock out the Mew, I will be able to utilize Giratina. So we are actually in trouble. Not KOing is actually better, I feel at this point in time, just being patient, right? Just being patient. Uh, this doesn't help me. <laughs> what a weird game. It's insane that my opponent managed to pull that off though. It was actually pretty crazy that my opponent managed to pull this off. And because of that, it might be that we won't be able to finish this game off. He set up both Kaldeos to be dealt with by um, by the regular Giratina. Okay, so I managed to top the gate Lily. I'm gonna go after this guy. I'm gonna bench that, I'm gonna attach that, and then a Lily. Hopefully I get an energy here, which I do. I actually do, but not much else. Not much else, so might as well go ahead and do this. Just get myself Malawa, now that's not terrible by any means. For next turn, and Army Sakurito, thanks so much for the follow. And now we get to two hit KO this person, which is awesome. We get to two hit KO this person, and as long as I heal off the damage with Malolana next turn, the Giratina will not be able to knock me out, which means he can't use that to beat me. This 40 damage over here might matter in the long run. <laughs> that sucks, sad. Yeah, Almastar is pretty tough for PG Blanks to deal with. Um, I ended up running this deck. This, this deck that you're seeing right now is what I ended up um, running. So ADP um, with custom catchers, with Jirachi. Should I custom catcher here? I feel like I should. Well, no, actually a custom catcher is potentially a game winning card. So I'll keep the Lily. Now this fully healed Kaldeo should be pretty good here. Now I'm about to get four prizes. I don't believe this deck runs reset stamp at all. So we'll get one, two, three, and four. We have double custom catchers to bypass this guy in case that's what my opponent wants to do. Even if he promotes this guy, like he's not doing any damage, so it's not the end of the world. We have our Detene to take for a potential Malo Lana or Switch, although it's not likely we'll find it. So Bryce, he didn't put 40 here, he put the 40 over here. But that should be game. As long as we don't get Resist Stamp, that should be game. If my opponent attacks me with the Dustnor, then maybe he hits the Custom Catchers, that's fine. 
It's not the end of the world. I just attack into it. If the laser win by one turn. So yeah, all all through day one and day two, I was hoping to hit Malamar, and Malamar was always at the top tables, but I was always just like a few games short. And then every round, I had Malamar to my right, Malamar to my left, but I had something different in front of me. <laughs> I did not hit a single Malamar in day one or day two. All right. Yeah, my opponent is under a lot of pressure. I can knock out Giratina. The only Pokemon I can't knock out to win is this guy. But this guy can't damage this guy, so it's a win one for me. If he doesn't attack with Dustin or Trev, I win. If he attacks with Dustin or Trev, I don't immediately win, but I will win in two turns. So now we see the Psychic Recharges onto the Giratina. I generally don't know what my opponent's planning. But it's good that despite him having the perfect turn two to slow us down, we were able to uh, make the comeback. And he does play reset stamp, so making some changes from the list from the weekend. But like I said, I am, yeah. Everyone was just playing out his cards. He had no way of beating us. So the servers will be going offline momentarily. Perfect timing for us to finish this. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. Um, I guess that will be it for the stream. I'm gonna go ahead and um, record some Spanish VGC videos, or should I stream them? I might stream them actually. I might start streaming in Spanish now for VGC. Um, sorry that it's a shorter stream, but the maintenance um, kills our mojo. Um, this will be going up on youtube for those of you who maybe didn't catch the beginning and i should be back streaming tomorrow um tomorrow is a weird day but i should be able to stream at least a couple of hours um throughout the day and um, we should be getting back on track with streaming and everything throughout the course of the week yeah so thank you so much for hanging out there's the there's the um, there's the, the, um, the game going offline. So yeah, thank you so much. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow in our next stream. Bye-bye.